now to Karen Atea of the Washington Post, Jamar Khashoggi's editor at the Post. Karen, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. We saw what President Trump said to your paper uh, last night. Your first reaction uh, to the Saudi cover story, much more pithy, utter BS. Yeah, um, I still believe, and the Post as an institution still believes that this is not an explanation. This is an attempt at a cover-up. Um, so much doesn't add up. Uh, for me personally, who, who knew Jamal, worked with Jamal uh, over the last year, you know, this, this idea, first of all, this idea that he, he wanted to return to Saudi Arabia is absolutely untrue. Um, there is a reason why he came to Washington and felt uh, free in Washington. He did not want to be arrested. He did not want to face the same fate as many of his acquaintances and associates who had been uh, swept up in this wave of, of crackdowns. He knew that, at the very least, under, under MBS, that, uh, that Saudi Arabia was not safe. So this, this idea is, strikes me as uh, that he wanted to go back just so strikes me as, as not true. And uh, second of all, you know, this, this idea that a, a brawl, you know, this, this man who is kind and calm and, and gentle, that any sort of brawl took place that was equal, if anything, if we we're going to give any sort of credence to this, he walked into an ambush that was set up for him. Khashoggi was not yet a legal permanent resident of the United States, even though he was working here for The Washington Post. Do you think the U.S. government did enough to protect him? I mean, the, the first questions that we have, I'm, I'm looking at the reporting that uh, there was intelligence, U.S. intelligence, that there was a plan um, coming from Mohammed uh, bin Salman, connected to him, that uh, a plan to capture or, or try to lure back uh, Khashoggi to, uh, to Saudi Arabia. Um, I was not informed. Uh, Jamal never uh, told me of, of any sort of, of physical threat to him. He, he knew that there were soft attempts to try to get him to stop writing for the Post and try to get him um, back. But as far as any uh, threats, um, at least he never mentioned them to me. But he just knew that there was pressure. There was an increasing pressure on him and, in particular, his family. Well, why do you think the Saudis were so concerned about him? He was a relatively moderate dissident, wasn't he? Right. And if anything, he, he hated the word dissident to, to begin with. He, he said, you know, I, I want to speak my mind. And if anything, reading his work, um, his work is, is very sort of constructive criticism, but also one that demonstrated a, a desire to see Saudi Arabia on the right path. Um, he, he felt like he wanted to advise MBS with constructive solutions. Now, one thing um, about Jamal in particular that made him so, uh, so valued as a, as a source um, for uh, on Saudi on what was happening is that he was very close to the royal family. He was an advisor uh, to the royal court for a long time and was very much seen as an insider and then took this turn to become more of a, of a critic, in particular a critic of, of Mohammed bin Salman's uh, behavior over the last year or so. So, you know, if there was, if this was maybe part of an attempt to silence what he might have known um, about the inner workings of, of the Saudi royal family, that is absolutely possible. But again, we do know that his writing for the Post um, especially irritated those back in Riyadh. What do you and The Washington Post want President Trump to do now? Right now, you know, Trump uh, has said over the weekend that, at the very least, again, this, this Saudi so-called uh, explanation is, is a first step. I mean, this admission that um, Jamal was murdered at the hands of, of Saudi men, um, if it is a first step, then it means that there's room for the administration to uh, pursue this as relentlessly as it should. I think the stakes are extremely high, not not just because it's just, you know, a one man or, or one journalist who worked for The Post, but the stakes are high for all critics, all dissidents right now who are extremely frightened, who now feel that um, this, the Saudi regime or any other uh, regime now has a free reign or a free pass to be able to go to other countries and snatch people up just for having an opinion. And I think we would want, or we do want, and we have been actively calling on the administration to, uh, first of all, um, cooperate and to get all the evidence uh, necessary in order to find out what happened and, if necessary, to impose consequences, including sanctions, including possible uh, cancellations or suspensions of arms deals. Um, human life should not have a price tag on it. Karen Atea, thanks very much for your time this morning. We are sorry for your loss.
Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.